So the first star is character. The second star is communication. The third star is a common vision. Everybody moving in the same direction for the same purpose to achieve the same goal. If you want to be a leader, the most important thing that you need to know is where are you leading people to? Where are you taking them? What direction? What is your goal? Where are you going towards? So those are the first three stars. Now, I was when we started developing the four stars of leadership, I wasn't surprised by any of those. All of those made sense to me. And they should make sense to you, right? I mean, here's a soldier, and he's telling you that the three most important things are character, communication, and a common vision. The fourth star is the star that shot me. The fourth star is caring. Caring. Have you ever thought about that as a leadership quality? That a true leader is someone who cares? This is General Frank's father's saw. And General Frank's father took him out to work on the barn one day. Just a good old farm boy out working on the barn. And his father has put him to cutting some wood. Now, if you've ever used a saw like this before, you know that if you put that on there, you push and you push and you push, it doesn't go anywhere. And that's what General Franks did. He got down there and he got the wood and he started pushing, 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 and he couldn't get the saw anywhere. And his father came over and said, Son, what you have to do is you have to put that down and you have to pull first, then push. Pull first, then push. And you have to pull with the same intensity that you push with. Well, General Franks, he learned how to saw wood that day, but he also learned one of the most important leadership qualities that a person can have. And we push, and we push, and we push, and that's the model. And General Franks learned an important lesson that you cannot get very far in life, especially in an all-volunteer army, just by pushing people around. If you truly want to succeed in life, what you have to do is you have to pull people first before you push them. In other words, I have to help you become more in order for me to become more. I have to help you become better in order for me to be become better. And in helping you become more and for helping you become better, I become more, I become better, and I become a leader. Every single one of you can be a leader. Every single one of you can be a leader that dramatically impacts the world today. Not at some point in the future. Not when you get your high school figured out and you get your college taken care of. You can be an individual that is a leader that dramatically impacts the world today. Let me share, share with you what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not a big country music fan. Sorry for you country music fans. I'm not a big country music fan. But one of the best music videos of all time is Garth Brooks, Standing Outside the Fire. Now that song goes like this. Standing outside the fire. Life is not tried, it is merely survived if you're standing outside the fire. But it has one of the most extraordinary videos that you'll ever see in a music video. It shows a kid, a high school kid, who has Down syndrome. He has mental problems and he has Down syndrome and he doesn't fit in. But he goes to school with everybody else. And his greatest desire is to be like all the other kids. His greatest desire is just to be like everybody else. So one day he goes to school and as he's going to school he looks up on the wall and he sees a sign up for the track team. And he thinks, hey! Here's a great opportunity. So he gets out his pen and he goes up to sign up for the track team and the coach stops him and says, no, 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 over there. And he looks over and he sees a sign up for the Special Olympics. Now there's nothing wrong with the Special Olympics, but what's his goal? His goal is to be like one of the other kids. So he looks over there and he looks at this one, he looks over there, he gets this big smile on his face and he puts his name up there with everybody else. Well, he goes home and he tells his parents. And his dad is furious. His dad is absolutely furious because he's afraid that everyone is going to make fun of him, that he's going to fail, that people are going to laugh at him, that, that, that it's going to turn out to be very bad. But Jared's undeterred. He goes and he works out harder than anybody else. He runs harder than anybody else. He stays longer at practice than anybody else. And finally it comes time for the big race. Okay? And it comes time for the big race. It's one of my favorite scenes because it shows these guys. They're all down there on the line getting ready, getting ready to run this race. Now, Girls, y'all go with me on this and tell me if I'm telling the truth or not. Guys have a tendency when they get into a race, a game, or something like that, we get the game face. 
All right? The game face. Now, in the game face, you know, we clench the teeth, so trying to make these little muscles right here come out. Mm. You know, we're trying to get those muscles to pop out. We narrow the eyes and we get those eyebrows down and furrowed a little bit. And then we do the nose thing. Have you ever noticed the nose thing? Or we start flaring the nose? And so I love those camera shots because it starts panning down and shows all these guys down there and they're sitting there going, Getting ready to run this race. And it goes down, it shows all these guys, and they got that game face on. And then it comes down to Jared. <laughs> He's just happy to be in the race. That's all he ever wanted was to be in the race. Well, the gun goes up and the gun goes off and he takes off running. And he's running around the first corner. And he's running around. He comes around the first corner. He's coming down to the back straightaway. And as he's coming down to the back straightaway, he is in dead last place. He doesn't have a prayer in the world of winning this race. But here he is. He's just happy to be in the race. That's all he wanted. He goes down the back straightaway. He comes around the final turn. And as he's coming around the final turn, he trips. And he falls. And he hits his face. And blood goes everywhere. Mom up in the stands. Everybody else up in the stands. Coach out on the field. Throws down the clipboard. Starts walking out to go scrape him up off the track so they can run the next race. But it's the dad. It's the dad who was standing over there outside the fence and he was watching his son so fearful of what might happen but yet hoping that it would be successful. And he sat there and he watched his own son fall. And as the coach is coming out there to pick Jared up and get him off the track, the coach is leaning down to pick him up. It's the dad who's over here and the dad jumps the fence and the dad yells at the coach and says, You don't touch him! He's not finished yet. And he comes along and he gets beside his son and he says, Come on, son. Get up and run. 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 And he runs the rest of the race with his son. That is leadership. That's leadership. Every single person in this room, every single person in this room has either fallen on their face before is laying on the track right now or is about to fall on their face. If you have not been there, you will be. It's a part of human life. But I guarantee you, the person sitting beside you, the person sitting in front of you, the person sitting behind you, they have all at some point in their life been there where they were in desperate need of someone, anyone, that would be willing to jump the fence and scream to the world, you don't touch them, they're not finished yet. I believe in them. I believe that they can finish this race. I believe that they can accomplish this. That is the principle that General Franks learned that day with the saw. That as you pull people up, you're able to push them to be more. Do you realize that every single one of you in this room has the ability to dramatically impact someone's life? Dramatically impact someone's life just by looking them in the eye and saying, you're better than Come on. I believe in you. I know that you can accomplish it. I know that you can do it. General Franks, it wasn't just a personal thing for him. General Franks took that idea into Afghanistan. And as he went into Afghanistan with the entire United States military, they rolled through Afghanistan. But the United States was not there to make Afghanistan the next state of the United States. The United States was not there to conquer. The United States was there, and General Franks ensured that the military cared about the very people that they were attacking. And this is the very first ballot that was ever printed for the presidential election. This is the very first one. That's caring about other people. It's caring about giving people a vote and a voice. Every one of you has a voice in this room. The question is, how are you going to use that voice? Are you going to use that voice to tear down other people or build them up? Are you going to use that voice to laugh at the person that's fallen down? Or are you going to use that voice to say, you're not finished yet. Get up and how are you going to use that voice? You have the ability to dramatically impact the world in which you live. 
you have the ability to dramatically impact the world in which you live. What kind of impact will you have?